I'm Idiotac, and these are my top 10 games of 2016. Now this is an entirely subjective list, obviously these are the games that left a lasting impression on me this year. I've played around 100 games this year, and it was a good year for gaming. However, there were a lot of broken games, a lot of incomplete games, a lot of not so customer friendly business practices going around this year. And as a result, I've eliminated every single one of those games from this list. These are games I'm happy recommending to you, the customer. So without further ado, let's get into the list itself. The first game on my list at number 10 is Abzu. Now this may be a little controversial for some of you out there. There's a lot of people in the gaming space who don't enjoy walking simulators as they have been dubbed. For me, I don't really care if a game has challenge, I don't care if it has puzzles to solve, problems to deal with. I just wanna have cool experiences. I understand that some games can offer me different experiences than other games, and that's totally fine. I'm a serial gamer, so to speak. So for me, that doesn't bother me at all. This game is $20 and it offers a two hour long experience, which immediately turns off most people when I talk to them about it. However, if you sit in a dark room with a pair of headphones on, you pick up an Xbox controller on your PC and you play through this experience, I guarantee you you'll come out the other side appreciating what's on offer here. It has some of the best art direction all year. It's made by the same art director that worked on Journey and Flower and it shows. It has some amazing environmental storytelling it's heartwarming, it's heart-wrenching at times, it tells a great story, but it's beautifully done and the orchestral soundtrack will blow you away. Swimming through the ocean with hordes of fish is just a really nice experience. I can't say anything else about it. Sure, it's not really that good value for money. $20 for two hours is pretty terrible on paper, but I can't forget this game and that's why it's on this list. At number nine, we have Super Hot. Now this is a very interesting game that I got to play this year, and while a little pricey and a little lacking in content, the gameplay experience on offer here is something I've never had before, it's as simple as that. You play the role of a hacker who obtains access to an exe file which allows you to enter this virtual simulation. The simulation is about being a badass action hero and being able to slow down time, think Max Payne, think The Matrix. Every time you move, time moves with you, and when you stop moving, time slows down. You'll have to face hordes and hordes of enemies, you'll hit a guy in the face, take his katana, turn around, cut another guy's head off, throw a glass in another guy's face to distract him, pick up a TV and smash that through some guy's head. It presents you with a number of puzzles, and they are very much puzzles. This is not a first person shooter in the classic sense. It doesn't require twitch reflexes, it requires careful planning and execution. And at the end of the sequence, the game will play it back for you in real time, and that makes you feel like pretty much a massive badass. So I thoroughly enjoyed the gameplay here. The narrative was very self-referential, very meta, the game messes with you a number of times. We've seen a lot of games do that recently, Pony Island, Undertale, and this does something along the same lines. But the gameplay is unforgettable. It was an extremely compelling experience this year, and as a result, it's on my list. The next game on my list at number eight is Fury. This is one of the best boss rush style games I have ever played. If you're a fan of Dark Souls, if you're a fan of Hotline Miami, really challenging games that leave you feeling very satisfied when you finally beat a level or a boss, you are going to enjoy Fury. It has some of the most interesting visually designed bosses I've seen. Every single boss has a unique personality, a story to deliver to you. They also have very interesting mechanics. Every boss feels different to fight. They have multiple phases and boss fights when executed correctly can take upwards of 30 minutes to beat. This is an adrenaline fueled experience and it will make you pull your hair out at times. But it is extremely satisfying when you finally do down a boss. It also has a great narrative. It's set in an extremely strange universe. It's such a cool experience from the visuals to the great soundtrack to the wonderful boss mechanics. I cannot recommend this game enough to you if you're a fan of those extreme mastery driven gameplay experiences. At number seven, we have Firewatch. Now I know immediately, having said that, there's gonna be a lot of people in the comments section who are less than happy about this decision to put this game on this list. And I understand their perspective, but for me, I feel Firewatch is one of the best games to come out this year, and I'm gonna explain why. It does mature storytelling in a way that I've not seen very often in video games. It has some of the best voice acting 
I've ever seen in video games. It has some excellent writing, and from the moment the game started, I cared about Henry, the main character. And while some people found the third act to be somewhat anticlimactic, I think it worked very well within the story. If you go watch my review of the game, I have a spoiler section at the end where I give my thoughts on this, so I won't go into it in any more detail. But I have to say, Firewatch has some beautiful visuals and has a really great soundtrack. I cared about the characters, the voice acting, the choice to say what it is you're gonna say to Delilah over the phone is a really unique mechanic. And because it was so well done, because it was so well written, it compelled me from beginning to end and I loved what was on offer here. Sure, it doesn't have that much gameplay. It's pretty much a walking simulator. It only takes about four or five hours to beat it. But it left an impression on me that I am not gonna forget anytime soon and it is an excellent example of storytelling and narrative in video games. At number six, we have Aragami, and it is the best stealth game I have played all year, and yes, that includes Hitman. Hitman was a great game. I feel Aragami is better. Aragami, you play as a shadow spirit, a ninja who's been summoned by this girl. I'm not gonna explain this story to you. It's quite compelling and it ends well. But what really matters here is the gameplay. You play as a shadow ninja and you can teleport in the shadows. In the light, you can't teleport and it drains your energy, which reduces the amount of abilities and powers you can use. It adopts mechanics from games like Dishonored, it adopts mechanics from games like Thief, and it has a very heavily drawn influence from Tenchu Stealth Assassins, a stealth game I absolutely loved growing up. It has fantastic kill animations, it's set in feudal Japan in this sort of mystical fantasy version of it, it's so satisfying to play, the puzzle mechanics are great, the stealth mechanics are great, everything about this game is wonderful in my opinion, it also has a fantastic soundtrack. And to add to that, it also has co-op, and you can play through the entire game with a friend. If you like stealth games, you need to go buy Aragami. At number 5, we have Stellaris. This, in my opinion, is the best 4x grand strategy game to release this year, and yes, that includes Civilization VI. Stellaris is from a developer called Paradox. Now, Paradox is also a publisher and they make very complex games, to say the least. A lot of their games have a lot of depth and a lot of enjoyment to be found in them, but it can be extremely difficult for a new player to get into one of their games. What they did this time around was they simplified some of the mechanics and they changed the way in which you start the game. In most Paradox Grand Strategy games, you start off with a whole empire and there's tons of problems for you to deal with right off the bat. In Stellaris, they build you up to that stage. It starts off as a 4X game, you start with a solar system and a single planet, and they slowly introduce you to new mechanics and you get used to them. And then once you've expanded, once you have an empire, it then transforms into a traditional paradox grand strategy game. It was expertly handled in terms of its mechanics. I absolutely love the theme. I love the degree of customization available. You could play this game hundreds and hundreds of times. It also has full mod support and they continue to develop new features for it over and over again. If you're a fan of Grand Strategy, please pick up Stellaris. At number four, we have Planet Coaster. I sunk far too many hours into this game before I reviewed it. I almost didn't want to review the game because I just wanted more excuses to play more of this game. I loved my time in Planet Coaster. The amount of creativity available on offer here is second to none. This is a creative person's dream. Now, when it comes to the management mechanics, they are certainly there. They're deep enough to keep you compelled moving into it. It has a bunch of different modes available. It has sandbox mode, it has challenge mode, it has a story campaign style mode where you solve problems. There's a lot of content here, but a major feature is the Steam Workshop. The amount of cool shit that people were able to make in just a matter of weeks and upload to the workshop is mind blowing. And the developers are going to continue to support that kind of content moving forward. They've also released a free winter DLC, which adds a ton of new features. They've also addressed some of the UI complaints that people had, and they're addressing some of the management elements that people have concerns about. This is the best successor to Roller Coaster Tycoon we have ever had, and if you have any interest in that type of game, in management games in general, or creative sandboxes, you must pick up Planet Coaster. At number three on my list is Titanfall 2. Now, out of games like Call of Duty Infinite Warfare, Battlefield 1, 
This is easily the best of those types of shooters. We used to call them modern military shooters, but now Call of Duty set in space and Battlefield is set in uh, World War One. So it's kind of hard to categorize what these are anymore, but I'm talking about the kind of games with long progression systems in multiplayer. I'm talking about those set piece driven single player experiences. When it comes to those type of games, Titanfall 2 is easily the best of those games to come out this year. The single player campaign was great. It was visually stunning. It had a great soundtrack. It had a cool story about the relationship between a pilot and his type. I loved it. They also introduced a number of movement mechanics over from the multiplayer into the single player and added a ton of puzzle solving mechanics, which was quite a unique surprise to find in a game like this. It was also quite challenging and the gunplay was snappy. There were a ton of guns available. It was an overall pretty damn good single player experience. Now, when we move on over into the multiplayer, they've added more Titans. They fixed some of the map design problems from the previous game. Now, some people have a few complaints about the maps and there always will be complaints about balance in games like this. But in my opinion, I think it's a drastic improvement over the first title. We've also got a ton of extra weapons, a bunch of extra abilities. They removed the card system from the previous game. They've tuned and tweaked it to create a much better experience. Overall, out of Call of Duty Infinite Warfare and Battlefield 1, this is hands down the best of those types of shooters to come out this year. At number two, we have Overwatch. Now, this is probably no surprise to most of you out there. Overwatch is a wonderful game, and it almost was my number one game of the year. It has an excellent cast of characters which are beautifully realized. Everyone instantly recognizes every single character on that roster. The art direction in this game is superb. The sound design is superb. The polish, as we expect from Blizzard, is superb. And for Blizzard's first attempt at a shooter, I haven't played many shooters this good in my life, let alone this year. Overwatch is a wonderful game. Now, it does have some issues. When it released, it didn't have the competitive element added. It does have microtransactions. And while I do have some problems with the way they've handled it, they do keep releasing a lot of content and they're not charging their user base for it. On PC, this is an excellent game. I've been playing arena shooters since the days of Quake 3 and Unreal Tournament, and I haven't felt this satisfied by an arena shooter style experience since those days. We have MOBA mechanics, we have wonderful characters, we have a team that's very dedicated to this game. They're balancing it, they're polishing it, they're adding new content over and over again. Overwatch is clearly one of the best games to come out this year. And if you like Team Arena, Twitch style shooters, you will love what Overwatch has to offer. At the number one position, making it game of the year, is Doom. Now I refuse to review this game based on Bethesda's terrible review practices and it hurt me not to do it. Let me tell you, because this is the best single player FPS I have ever played. I started playing FPS when I was five years old at my friend's house when I tried Wolfenstein 3D for the first time. I have then gone on to play every Doom game and every other major FPS to ever release. I'm telling you right now, this is the best single player FPS experience I have ever had. The game mechanics are exquisite. The movement system is satisfying. The constant need to move or die is extremely compelling. The soundtrack is the best of the year. The visuals are wonderful. The performance is wonderful. This is the best single player FPS you can have. That being said, I come from the old school. I come from a time when FPS focused on fun rather than narrative, rather than set pieces, rather than Michael Bay style explosions. I come from a time when FPS was about killing demons with shotguns and splattering their gibbs all over the wall. That's what I like in an FPS. This game delivers that in an FPS. It is beautiful. It's a master crafted work when it comes to single player FPS. Every single monster has its own unique mechanics. The soundtrack drives the action. The movement system encourages you to keep moving forward. They added a parkour jumping system, which is highlighted by green lights everywhere, telling you where you need to go. It's intuitive, the level design is superb, the set pieces are great, the visuals are great, everything about this single player campaign is good. And to add to that, they added an arcade mode so you can compete with your friends on a leaderboard. It's stunning. Now I need to mention the multiplayer is average. It's not terrible, 
It's not great, it's average. It was made by a different studio. They have been trying to improve it. The snap map mode, which allows you to make your own custom levels, is limited. It doesn't matter. The single player campaign is easily the best experience I had this year, if not the best experience in single player FPS I have ever had. Doom, hands down, easily, game of the year for me, 2016. So that's it. That's my top 10 games of 2016. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you disagree with some of my choices, feel free to let me know below. It's good if you can share your own ideas and thoughts on what the game of the year is for 2016, because it gives people more options, and that's always a good thing. So let me know below what you think the best game of 2016 was. Now, if you want to support my work and you like my channel and you want to help me out, here's some ways you can do it. You can buy games using my Green Man Gaming affiliate link below. You can buy any of the games on this list or any other game you might want. You'll save some money and I'll make some money. It helps support the channel. You can also support me directly on Patreon. You'll find a link in the description box below for that as well. And if you can't do either of those things, the best way you can support this channel is to share my work. Share it with your friends, share it on social media. It really helps the channel grow. I hope you all have an excellent holiday and a great new year. I will see you in 2017.